the dissolution process okay so this is a process once again we're still talking about solutions still talking about solutions still talking about solutions still talking about solutions okay so let's talk about solutions and how they're interacting with each other right so let's just look at this little uh, beaker all right this beaker has a solution in it all right understand right in the solution you got solvent and solute Remember those two things. Solvent is dissolving the solute, and the solute is being dissolved. Okay. Now, with that being said, we are going to see three interactions, okay, in this whole dissolution process. Okay, we will see three interactions. We're going to see a solvent reacting with a solvent interaction. Okay. Then we're going to see a solute interacting with another solute, right? And then we finally see a solvent interacting with a solute. Okay, these are the three interactions we see during this process. Now, let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about this. Let's look down here, right? Certain things happen, right, with these interactions. We got our solute being dissolved by our solvent. Salt being dissolved by water. So say we see these interactions and they're greater than our solvent and solvent interactions. And we have more of these solvent and solute interactions than both solvent, solvent, and solute, solute interactions. So if that is the case, right, and if we do have more solvent and solute interactions, we're going to see a solution form, okay? Solution will form. But let's say, right, the solvent and solute interactions are equal to the solvent solvent interactions and the solute solute interactions. Well, right, we're still going to see a solution form. Still going to be uh, see a solution form. However, say for some instance the solvent and solute interactions, right, these right here are less than our lesson, so we don't have as many of these interactions going on, but we have a lot more interactions with our solvent solvent and our solute solute. Okay, so if that is the case, a solution it may or may not form, but okay, so it, it depends, but it's probably not going to form, okay, most likely. Okay, and when this happens, right, you're going to get layering occurring, okay, between this sol solute or solvent. Depending on if it's a liquid liquid or, or if it's a solid liquid, right? The solid just may not dissolve in that uh, liquid, okay? And this is what's going to happen, right? If you see this um, solvent, solvent, and solute, solute interactions, right? If you see more of these compared to the solvent, solute interactions, man, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, Peter Piker. Uh, pits a piper, whatever. These, this is a tongue twister with all these S's. I'll tell you. Okay. So when we're talking about solvent and solute, okay, a couple things must always happen. Okay. In, in order for solutions to occur. Okay. So you got to overcome these things. All of your solute and solute attractive forces or some of your solvent, solvent attractive forces. Okay. So you got to overcome those. Okay, if you overcome those, then you will have a solvent solute interaction, right? Okay, now this whole process, okay, both these processes, uh, this solute solute and this solvent solvent interaction, both of these are endothermic, right? These are absorbing energy. Now, with solute and solvent attractions, these are exothermic, right? Exothermic, remember, they're releasing energy. They're releasing energy because they're forming these new bonds, right, between a solvent and a solute, okay? So these are things that must always happen in order for you to have a solvent solute mixture, a solution going on. Let's just talk about some terms, right? Let's talk about some terms real fast with the dissolution process, right? Because now we understand intermolecular forces, and now let's just talk about terms that we've probably heard before, but now we get why they happen, right? So solubility. Talk about solubility, right? We understand solubility now, right? Uh, with the solvent, the solute interaction, solute, solute, solvent, solvent, okay? 
So we get the what's, the what's going on on a micro scale, okay? But solubility is the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a given amount of solvent, okay? So for every solvent, it's going to have a max amount. It's always going to have a max amount that that solute can be dissolved. Anybody ever made tea or, or any type of drink, right? Uh, Kool-Aid, whatever. Uh, lemonade, whatever, okay? If you put too much sugar in it, it's going to reach a level, okay? If you put a lot of sugar in your drink, right? You're going to have a drink. Say you got 20 milliliters, you try to dump in 50 grams of sugar, all right? You're going to, have to see that 50 grams of sugar not being dissolved, okay? Because that's just a lot of sugar. So it's not going to be dissolved in this, in that, in that drink. It's reached, right? It's solubility. Okay, so we call that drink, that drink will be very saturated. Okay, you got too much, you got too much. It's probably super sweet, it's probably pretty good, all right, but it's, it's just too much. Okay, so there's usually a limit to the solubility of one substance. Okay, and this is always going to be the case. Okay, always going to be the case. Now, gases are always going to be soluble in each other. They're always going to be soluble, however, with each other. They're gases, right? They're independent. We get that now, right? So when we have two liquids that are mutually soluble with each other, we call these miscible, okay? So they're able to be dissolved with each other, okay? Al alcohol and water are miscible, right? They're going to dissolve in each other. Immiscible, okay? So basically, those two solids are not going to be soluble, right? Examples like oil and water. They, these are immiscible. Okay, they're not going to be mutually soluble with each other. Okay. Now the solubility. Okay, you definitely want to pay attention to this because the solubility of one substance and another varies depending on the temperature and pressure. Right. Um, we'll see this later on. Uh, but basically, right, if you increase the temperature, that might increase the solubility. Or if you increase the pressure, that might decrease the solubility. It just depends on the, the type of liquid that you have. But temperature and pressure will play a role in your solubility. Now, here's a rule of thumb that you should pay attention to. Likes dissolve likes. Likes dissolve likes. Okay, So a chemical will dissolve in a solvent if it has similar structures to that solvent okay similar properties for example right if anybody's ever been in a lab right you know polar molecules and ionic compounds will be more soluble in polar solvents right if you ever you know try to mix any type of polar molecule with a polar solvent you know that's going to work however if you've been in a lab right or or not okay for instance say you got a non-polar molecule it's not going to be able to be dissolved in a uh polar type of solvent okay because lights dissolve lights so a non-polar molecule is going to be more soluble in a non-polar solvent right so you just want to be aware of that lights dissolve lights okay